Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm excited to be up early and to play with some new makeup. I just did a massive Sephora haul and I promised you guys that I was going to do two trying new makeups before the end of the Sephora sale. The sale ends on Monday, uh, April 11th. I almost said August. Woo, we're still in April, Babs. But it ends on Monday, so I really wanted to review as many products as possible before the sale ends. That way, if there's something you're curious about, I can demo it and show you uh, what it looks like on camera, give you my initial feedback, and then maybe you can make a better informed purchase. But today I wanna focus in on the Gemini 2 palette from Melt Cosmetics. I did get this in PR, it's available now, uh, today, so I will link it down below. I also want to play with these one size bronzer and contour trio and the blush trio. A lot of people want to see that. I also am going to be including the Rare Beauty uh, skin tint in my next video and I'll kind of explain why. I also am still testing out the Lawless Concealer. I want to demo it for you. Still testing out the All Nighter from Urban Decay. I have a sample of the Dior Forever Matte Foundation and I thought that that would be best with the Melt Palette because the Melt Palette is very intense. I just don't think the Rare Beauty would kind of go with what I'm gonna do with the melt and for lips. I really want to play it by ear I don't exactly know what I'm gonna do with the melt palette yet So it's all gonna depend on that But if you saw my haul I did pick up a ton of lip products So I will be using you know something new. I just don't know what yet So I will be linking all of the products that I talk about today down below in my description box I will leave the information about the Sephora sale as well So if you're new here, I hope you subscribe if you enjoy these videos, please give this video a thumbs up um, without further ado let's get into it So I feel like I'm looking pretty rough. I'm worn down. I've been getting up super early with the puppy. I have the best uh, chance of him napping a longer stretch if I get up super early while he's still tired. So I've been getting up at like 4.30 or 5 to film these videos just because he's still a handful throughout the day and he's napping, but he's like napping an hour here, you know, an hour there. And to be able to film these videos, I really need like a two or three hour stretch, especially when I'm trying tons of new products. I just put some Lumify in my eyes because I feel like I'm looking a little worn down. So it is what it is, but I wanna try this. I picked up from Ulta just randomly. This is the Awake by Tarte Lip Mask and I got the shade Watermelon. Now the reason that I got this honestly is because I forget if I saw this on TikTok or something like that, but it looked really pretty like it had a pigment to it. Typically I don't like to dig my fingers into this, but lately I'm really into just like really juicy lips. So I wanna see how this feels and what kind of pigment. It looks pretty. It has a really nice color to it. So I feel like this is something that I could almost use like on top of a lip liner or if you want just like a really kind of high shine lip look but you're not really into glosses. I just wanted to try this out for the color and I do think it's pretty. I would use it more so like as a lip gloss or a tinted, you know, like lip oil type of look with makeup on whereas the Too Faced I use more so just to hydrate my lips. So I think this is cute. You know what, just an impulse purchase. I wanted to give it a try. All right, so now I wanna jump into the new Melt Gemini 2 palette. So I did receive this in PR and I'm really excited to play with it. I'm a little bit intimidated because Melt shadows can be inconsistent and these shades, like this color story, it's beautiful but it's very dark very, you know, grungy, smoky. I would be, I guess, inclined to go into like these shades, but because I know, I know somebody's going to say, well, why didn't you use the greens? I'm going to do the greens. I feel like I always make things as hard as possible for myself. I don't know why I'm this way. I just want to review the products as best I can for you guys, even if it's more difficult for me. They had the original Gemini palette and they did bring it back. It's available at Sephora. They did send that as well. So I will actually throw some swatches up of that just in case you're interested, but they did bring it back to Sephora and you can get it during the sale. So I love the packaging. Melt Aesthetic is just so unique. It's so interesting. There's brands like, you know, Patrick Ta. I love the aesthetic. It's very like uh, soft, glam, neutral. I really love his aesthetic. But then I also love aesthetics like Melt. That's just so fun and artsy and just rich with color. So A plus for the packaging. And I will say that there's not many shimmers in here. It looks like there are, th no, two shimmers in here. 
tons of mattes. I'm usually a matte girl, but I know for tutorials people love shimmers. So there's only two shimmers in here, and when I'm looking at them, they look like they're pressed better. In the past, I've seen some issues with them almost like they're not pressed enough, like these shimmers are kind of like lifting up, and then I feel like they're very chunky. So let's go ahead and swatch. So here is the green. Okay, feels very soft. And here is that, oh my God, that is gorgeous. So looking at the pan, it didn't lift or chunk yet. I mean, this is really, really pretty. So I have high hopes, maybe they did adjust their shimmer formula. So we're gonna do a look, I'm gonna do my best. I'm a little intimidated, but we'll, we'll see what we can come up with. So I have to say, I'm a little stumped on how to <laughs> blend these colors together because I do wanna incorporate the green. But I think I'm gonna start out with LX Queen. Is it LX Queen? Yeah, LX Queen, which is this really deep matte shade. I did not set my lid because when I'm doing something very, very deep, I want something to stick on. And I'm going to pack this on the outer portion of my eye and I want to sort of wing it up. It feels like very unnatural for me to put this like in this shape, but I always try to push myself. I always want to try different techniques. And I also don't ever want to become, I don't know, maybe boring. Like, I know I do my winged liner a lot, but I always want to try to do as much as I can with palettes. But sometimes it's intimidating. I'm like, oh, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get that shape right. I just caught a glimpse of myself in the viewfinder, and I feel either like a mix of like Mimi sort of vibes with the deep shade or like I'm doing like alien chic. I don't really know, but trust the process. So this is where I'm stumped because I want to incorporate the green somehow, but I want this to blend. I think I'm going to, ooh, this is like so difficult. I think I'm going to use, let's use this shade called Love Sick. Uh, when I tell you I need to clean my brushes, it's actually appalling. I'm like getting so low on my brushes because I've been filming so much and just haven't had the time. So there's that. Okay, so, oh, that's dark. Okay, actually, I'm just gonna put Love Sick right in here. I was gonna put it all the way across, but these are really rich and pigmented. Oddly enough, I'm not really having much fallout, probably because my base is sticky. Take the shade up here called Almond Eyes and put this on the inner portion of the lid. So I'm essentially doing three colors and then we're gonna work on blending them together. This is gonna take a minute. So now that I have this wild shape, I'm just gonna take a clean brush and I'm gonna start blending. Very similar to how I blended the Patrick Ta video I did. Just blending the edges. Just take your time. If it gets messy over here, I'm not worried about that. And I'm almost going to go up to the brow here. I'm just going to blend everything very, very softly. Taking a different brush that's clean, working on that green shade now. So to bring a little bit of warmth in, I'm gonna go in to the lightest shade called Bella, and I'm gonna use a different brush and a very light hand. I'm just very, very lightly going to blend these edges. I have to say, these are very pigmented, like the whole palette has a ton of depth. So just keep that in mind. So I feel like I need something in between the deep and the light. So I think I am gonna take Maybe I'll take Sweetheart, which is like a pink. They look so much, I guess, not so much, but they do look lighter in the pan, but they really have a lot of payoff. So I'm taking this like right in between so that it's not that really harsh, deep color going straight into that peach. I feel like it was looking a little bit choppy. I'm gonna try a little bit of this shade instead of the pink, just to see if I can get a little bit more of a seamless blend. And then I am gonna mix the pink with that peachy shade. And I just want to very lightly go over the edges. I have such a hard time out here because my brow, just my microblading, but also just the way my brows grow. So I have a hard time like getting a nice blend out here because it's going over a lot of concealer and just my natural brows. So I did the best I could blending. I feel like this side is giving me a little bit of trouble, but it is where my brow grows. So it's nothing that's, you know, out of the ordinary. So now I wanna take this 
shimmery green. I feel like I have to use it. Matteo, this is really dark and I almost lost, well I did lose really, you know, all the different colors. So let's go in with this shade. It's really pretty, but it's just so dark. Which again, could be my problem because I went in super dark. I think because both of the shimmers in here are really, really deep, I feel like I needed a really deep base, but I probably could have gone lighter on the inner portion of my eye. So the shimmer applied nicely. It's not chunky at all in the pan, which is good. I do feel like it's not super, you know, intense, but I'm gonna go back into Sweetheart right here and just make sure that I'm not losing the pink. So to blend that green into the purple, I'm gonna go into Lovesick. I'm honestly just playing around. I feel like everything is working well, like it's not getting muddy, which was my biggest concern. I just cleaned up Fallout and I feel like something is off and I'm not liking this pink and green. Something's just not working for me. I'm gonna go into Almond Eyes, and which is that matte green. I wanna see if I like this more. I'm gonna attempt this shade Ladylike. I feel like something is not connecting here and I'm getting like just a little frustrated just because I feel like I'm making a mess at this point. Like there's just too many shades. I just feel like, ooh, not my best. So at this point, I don't feel like adding anything more will help. I wanna get lashes on and maybe that will pull it together. So I'm gonna go off camera and apply lashes and then we'll start on the face. Okay, so I finally got lashes on after three different pairs. Today's not my makeup day, but I just wanna power through. I'm going in with my Hourglass Vanish Airbrush Primer in my T-Zone. Whew. Struggle bus today. Sometimes that's just how it goes. Okay, so now let's try out this new foundation. I have a sample and I was able to go in store and get a sample of both the Dior Forever Matte and the Dior uh, Forever Glow. This is the matte. This is supposed to be a matte finish, but still hydrating, medium coverage. It has an SPF, I think, of 15. So I did try the Glow one and I really liked it. It did do a little bit of patching with some of my powder products. I do tend to prefer matte foundations overall, or I will mix a matte with a glowy foundation, but I've heard good things about this. I have the shade 2.5W. So I'm gonna go ahead and start applying. So I do agree on the medium coverage claim, and I have heard a couple people say that this is not like a really dry matte. So I'm wondering if it's going to be like the perfect medium for me. Typically matte foundations are like real matte. This isn't looking overly, you know, matte, like let's say an Estee Lauder Double Wear or something like that. But I do tend to prefer matte foundations because they last longer on me and powders go over them better and also, they're a little bit just more smoothing on my pore area. So here is the Dior Forever Matte Foundation. I do feel like it is sort of in between. It doesn't feel like a flat matte to me, but it's not as glowy as the Forever Glow. I thought the shade oxidized, and I do think that happened with the Glow one as well, so it did end up being a little bit more warm. So I can see the warm undertone now. Coverage, I would say, is medium. So I like it so far. I wanna see how products blend over top. So next, I wanna use concealer. I'm gonna be using the Lawless Conceal the Deal Full Coverage Concealer. I'm gonna be using the shade Cream Puff. I did demo this a couple times, but it's the newest concealer to me, and I just wanna keep kind of demoing it to get my thoughts. I would say this is a medium coverage. It has that self-setting feel, and I've been enjoying it. It's just not a very hydrating formula, but some people have oily skin and like more of that matte texture. So the shade is obviously a little light for this foundation, but I feel like it'll do a nice job at brightening. Blends super easily. I mean, I feel like I like it. I just don't think that it's full coverage, and I know that a lot of people right now are looking for very hydrating concealers, then this, I wouldn't say, is hydrating. It's not like drying and making my under eyes look bad. I think it's just more of a matte formula. So this is what the Lawless Concealer looks like. I feel like I really need to brighten up the face, so I'm gonna go in with my Pound Cake Powder from Huda Beauty. 
So I'm just pulling this down the T-zone just to sort of smooth everything out, but also just lighten a little bit. I do feel like that foundation oxidized a little bit. Okay, so now that we have our foundation set, I wanna go in with this new one size bronze and contour trio. I got it in the shade medium, and you have three powders in here. It looks like cool, red, and warm. So I'm gonna start off with the cool shade and I wanna try to contour. So the formula feels quite powdery when I just dipped in, but I'm going to just use this to sculpt out the face a little bit. Okay, so that's a nice cool tone shade. I feel like it did give me a nice sculpt to the face. I wanna go in next, I think I wanna go into this shade on the top that's more warm. See how much warmth this will give me? It's quite powdery, like I said, like you dip in and a lot of powder comes off on your brush. So I'm just tapping that, oh yeah, ooh, okay, that's pigmented, so be careful. Even with tapping off, So I would literally dip in and then tap off like once because it is very pigmented. It's a thin formula, like the powder's thin, but it's very pigmented. So I like the formula so far and I like the different tones. I do think that you have to go in with a light hand because I think I got a little bit carried away on my forehead. I tend to get patching on my forehead regardless. I don't know why, whether I moisturize or not. It's just the first place to patch, but I like the colors of it. So, so far so good. I'll have to keep trying this out, but I think the shade that I chose works for me. Okay, I actually stopped filming for about an hour. I had some things I had to do, but now I'm back. Today's just been a morning, okay? So I wanna go in and finish off the lower lash line. I'm almost wondering, let me go into this shade, which is that deep green. And then I'm gonna take this green matte up here. If I sound like I'm rushing, I apologize, I actually am. Just because I have so much going on. I've had some, uh, some bumps in the road this morning and uh, yeah, the puppy has been, you know, downstairs by himself a little too long and he's, he's giving me a hard time. I just gave them peanut butter Kongs, hopefully, so I can get this finished. To be honest, I'm really not liking my makeup today. I'm trying to stay positive, but it could just be because I don't have my lips done. I feel like I'm looking a little bit, I don't know, the bronzer's a little heavy, the foundation oxidized. Ooh, so I think I'm gonna go in to this shade down here. There's not like a light a shimmer in here. I just feel like I need some sort of like brightness, but is that making me look ill? You know, possibly. <laughs> I'm also gonna take these two shades right here just to smoke on the lower lash line so that it's evened out. But yeah, this, uh, I always challenge myself to try to use as many shades and mix hard combinations. Uh, today, it just wasn't in my favor. To finish off the eyes, I'm gonna take my Nabla liner in three. I've been using this a lot lately, but it's like a beautiful, like purple. Oh my God. Wow, we're just on a roll today. <sighs> it's one of those moments where I'm like, woo saw, like, don't freak out, don't freak out, <laughs> don't freak out, because this morning has been testing me. I'm gonna let that dry. I'm gonna let that dry. Everything will be okay. You know what? I'm actually gonna do my lips because I want that to dry before I go in with the cheeks. I'm gonna line my lips with my new lip liner for Makeup by Mario. This is Milk Chocolate. Okay, I'm gonna attempt to scrape this off. This is the best way to remove something like this, but that was a huge glob, so I'm gonna have a little mark. Okay, so now I wanna go in with the one size trio. I know I'm all over the place. I apologize, you guys. There's just been a lot going on this morning and I struggled with that makeup. So I looked on the Sephora website and you can apply it all different ways. He says that you can use the cream first, the powder first, you know, the topper shade first. So this is a really bright color story. It's just what we're working with right now. I'm gonna start with the cream, just because I wanna see how this goes over powder. If this lifts my powder, I think I actually am gonna have a mental breakdown because today is just not it. So I'm gonna take some on my sponge. This is how I always apply. Now I will say this seems extremely pigmented. Specifically with this shade at least, 
I have to be very careful. I mean, look at all that is coming off. So I'm going to just start stippling. And I think the key is stippling. Uh, I cannot do like a brush and swipe or even swipe this on my face. That would lift 100%. Okay, so this blush is not for the faint of heart. Now, just keep in mind that this is the really bright shade called Firestarter. I have no lifting at all, but again, I think it's just my application. I am very, very careful. I just feel like I'm prone to lifting. So I just dipped in for the other side. And when I tap this on my skin, I'm not like pushing hard. I am like barely even touching the skin. So I'm not even giving it an opportunity to lift. Okay, I know that I'm looking wild. I know that we have a lot going on. It's just the nature of the products that I really wanted to try for you guys. This is super pigmented. It is almost very similar, I would say, to the LYS in terms of the way that it applies. It's just thinner in texture, but it's extremely pigmented. At least this shade is. Now, I did order another one, but I'm waiting for it to come. I don't even think I would layer the powder over top like i'm gonna look absolutely insane i like a heavy blush this is heavy so what i'm gonna do is just take i have this tati beauty puff because all of my beauty blender puffs are dirty so i'm just gonna kind of calm this down i do want to attempt this but i am terrified just because i have a lot of makeup on right now and i don't want to go into like even crazier so i'm gonna use a really small brush. I mean, a lot comes off. So I'm even going to just sort of use your hands. If you are, you know, worried about lifting, patching, work off your hands. Don't just like dig in and go like that. Or even the cream, don't swipe it on your face. Don't take a brush and start going like this. Immediately going to lift. So this looks really pretty like when you blend it out. Okay, maybe I'm going to like this. So I'm going to take this almost like as a highlight. Are you seeing that? Okay, that's pretty. So here's the side with that. So hopefully you can see it just gives like a little bit of a glow. Of course, I want to try all these products like separately or layering them different ways, but I just am trying to make a cohesive look <laughs> if I can do that. So this is what the cream and then the shimmery topper look like together. This shade incredibly pigmented so be careful i would say not for beginners uh, but i am interested to try the other shades when they come in and see if it's just this color or if they're all super pigmented but i like this enough that i want to buy a couple more shades now for lips i feel like i need something extremely just basic nude i'm gonna try this armani uh, lip maestro that i picked up in sand i don't know if this is going to be too warm i'm just going to play around but i don't want something that's going to compete with everything else we have going on so let's just this actually might work so i'm going to put it in the center and then i just take my finger and sort of blend Strangely enough, I think that shade works perfectly with this look just because it's so loud. I didn't know, you know, what lip to put with it. So I'm continuing to test out the Urban Decay All Nighter with Vitamin C. I did talk about this more um, in detail in the first trying to make up I did with this, but I'm still testing it out. And essentially from everything that I've seen and what I can gather, it's basically the same as the original All Nighter in terms of locking your makeup in but it has a radiant finish rather than a natural finish. So basically, if you like your makeup to be locked in, but you want a little bit of that glowy, radiant look, that's basically what it's marketed for. Has a, like a light citrus scent, very, very light. So I'm gonna go ahead and spray it. I'm still just getting my thoughts on this. So the mister, I don't know if it's just mine, but I feel like she's a little aggressive. A little aggressive. Hopefully I don't have any like dots on my face. 
I definitely do see more of a radiance with this as opposed to the original, but I'm still testing out if it really locks my makeup in like the original. All right, guys, so here's my finished makeup look, trying new products. Um, it was basically 30 minutes of watching me struggle. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Honestly, I think I just had some really intense, dramatic products that didn't really match color-wise, and I was trying to put them all in one video. I also think something funky is going on with the foundation. But let's start out with the Tarte Lip Mask. I think it's pretty. It's comfortable on the lips. I like the smell of it. Of course, I don't like putting my finger in, but I really bought it for that tint, and I think it's beautiful. It gives me a tint. It's one of the reasons I really love the Too Faced and Watermelon. I just love the pink tint. So this is something I probably would wear like over a lip liner rather than a lip treatment, but I like that. Really, the shade just got me. Moving on to the Melt Gemini 2 Packaging A+, and I have to say that the shadows performed beautifully. I know there's been some inconsistencies with Melt, and I think that the shimmers are really easy to work with. They're not chunky. I didn't have any issues that I've had in the past. I would have liked to see maybe like one lighter shimmer that would have been in this pinky realm. I think it's really difficult to not do a deep, smoky look when both of the shimmers in the palette are very, very dark. But Melt has a really grungy, smoky look anyways. And honestly, I feel like if I were to buy this myself as a consumer, I would use these shades the most. Because I am a YouTuber and because I'm actually crazy, I don't know why I do this to myself, but I wanted to mix and match. I felt like if I didn't use the greens, you know, I wasn't doing enough. If I didn't use a shimmer, at least, I wasn't doing enough. I just try to really push myself to try to see what I can come up with. And I think it's just really difficult when you have all these different deep rich tones but overall the palette performed great i just don't think this is going to be like a standalone palette unless you're going to kind of stay in this realm or just stay right here i just think you may have to bring in another palette to get some lighter shimmers like maybe for the inner corner or the brow bone or even just lighter mattes in general these are just very rich and deep if you like smoky smoky eyes this will be the palette for you. I feel like it performed beautifully, but I just struggled myself trying to mix and match all these colors. Shockingly, I'm undecided on this Dior foundation. Something weird happened where I feel like it oxidized and I feel like I look quite dark overall. Like my whole complexion just looks a little bit too dark. And I also feel like it's enhancing my pores more so than the Dior Glow, which is interesting. So I don't know if this is gonna be for me. I prefer the Dior Glow, to be honest. I would rather mix the Dior Glow with my matte foundations. I feel like this is thin, comfortable, medium coverage, but something about the shade oxidizing may have thrown me off. You guys will have to let me know down below. Not sure about this. I do prefer the Glow, just upon my first impression. And I do like the Lawless Concealer. I do think it is more of like a creamed powder. I do think it's medium coverage. I I wouldn't say it's full. It doesn't enhance my dryness or fine lines, but if you struggle with really dry under eyes, I would probably choose something more hydrating. I'm also feeling undecided on the bronzer trio from one size. I feel like I wasn't ready for how pigmented this is, and then I also feel like I applied too much and I just look really, really almost just too much, like a little, a little dirty, if you will. I don't think the formula is bad. I just think I'm mixing so many new products together that maybe something didn't mesh. I like the packaging on it. It is nice and sturdy. It is a little bit bulky, but I like it. And I'm excited to keep using these shades. I just think I need to use them with a foundation I know and love. Now I have to say a standout for me today is the One Size Blush Trio. Let me tell you why. The cream applied beautifully over powder if you apply the way I do. Again, I can't stress this enough, but any cream, if I use a brush, like even a stippling brush, it just lifts and moves. I just have an issue with that. So for me, I can never do that. I always have to work off of my hand with a sponge, the lightest tapping motions. This is incredibly pigmented, so I'm interested to try the other shade that I picked up. I really wanna see if that one is just as intense. It's a little bit scary if you're new to this and you're like, whoa. The powder I used the other day, very pigmented, again, blended beautifully, just had to be really careful. And then this shade shocked me. I thought it was just gonna be like, really just kind of like texture enhancing and a little bit too much, but it's not. It gives a little bit of like a nice glow to it. So now I'm really intrigued. This I had no issues with. I love the packaging and I bought another shade, but I think I am gonna buy, you know, maybe like 
two more, so I have four of them. I really want to test them out. In terms of this color, there's no um, similarities from this color to the Patrick Ta duos. And in terms of formula, the Patrick Ta is a little bit more emollient and sheer. It can really be built up. The cream is what I'm talking about. This was like, bam, in your face. So I would say this is most similar, let's say, to the LYS, but a thinner formula and more pigmented. Still loving my Makeup by Mario lip liners. I own four shades now. I just love all the variations. I love the formula. And if you need help blending, it has a brush on one side, which is super useful. Love the Armani Lip Maestro. I really love the shade Tan. It's not as, I guess, like beigey yellow as this, but I really like this sand color. It's almost like a deeper version of Dose of Color Sand. Just has that really warm, I don't know, color to it. These are very comfortable. They don't dry down and like suck the moisture out of your lips. So this is a yes for me. And lastly, I do like this Urban Decay All Nighter. I do think it's something different. When I originally heard about it, it just kept being referenced as the vitamin C, the vitamin C. I really think this is just a radiant setting spray that locks your makeup in. So basically just like the original All Nighter, but this is gonna give you a little bit of a glow. And I feel like a lot of people want that. It's really hard to find a setting spray that locks your makeup in without making you matte. So I think that's where they were going with this. So I'll keep trying this out. I really wanna do, as I said before, I've been so busy, but, and I forgot. I should do half of my face with this and then half of my face with the original and see if they wear the same way and just see if this one gives a little bit more radiance but still locks your makeup in. Okay guys, so that is it for me and this roller coaster of a video. I hope you guys at least enjoyed it and maybe got to see some products you were eyeing and maybe make a decision on whether they would work for you. If you have any questions, leave them down below. I can definitely chat with you if there's something you're unsure about or you don't know if one of these products would work for your skin type. As always, I will link everything I use today down below in my description box as well as the details on the Sephora sale that ends on Monday. Thank you guys again so much for watching. I'm sorry this was a train wreck, but at least I got to demo the products for you guys before the sale ends, so I'll keep trying them out and update soon, but I appreciate you guys being here, and I'll see you in the next video.